when we say rest in peace we say rest in peace to the dead rest in peace to sound sultan who didn't live to see the end of this struggle niger ninja sound sultan so many questions about what really happened what really happened with the NSAS campaign, NSAS protest? What started off as a peaceful protest ended up very chaotic. This protest had only one goal, just one goal, to see that the special anti-robbery squad was dissolved. This campaign started gathering momentum across the Federation. Days became weeks until one thing happened. The arrest and the beatings of innocent citizens, the shootings and the killings across the Federation. On the night of the massacre, the people were asked to sing the national anthem. They did. Hold the national flag. They did. All of these didn't stop the massacre from happening. The massacre happened, those involved denied, but forensic evidence came out to debunk their claims. One year down the line, and the story is still the same, and SARS. And in our boat, they want to take me to a police station. I'm, I'm not going anywhere. You're not going to shoot me to you. Give me where they decide that. I won't die since. And we are ending this documentary with DJ Switch. And a DJ, I listen to music a lot, you know, all the time. And I'm reminded of the legend, the artist, Fela and Nicola Pokuti. He was known for speaking truth to power with his art. And I'm reminded of his 1977 song titled Zombie. Here, Fela likens the Nigerian military to mindless zombies following idiotic orders. It was relevant then, it is relevant today, and it most likely will be relevant tomorrow, in the future. The same future that they say is in the hands of the leaders of tomorrow. But what we have tomorrow are recycled leaders of today who have failed to provide an enabling environment for young leaders to thrive and contribute. No, but they chose instead to kill us all off, one by one. This might sound outrageous to you, and you might wonder why, and I'll tell you. Our leaders are afraid. It's as simple as that. They're afraid of a thinking, an innovative, a collaborative, and a working Nigeria. They're afraid of every young Nigerian who, against all odds, have made it for themselves. They are afraid of a me 
the coconut head generation as we like to call ourselves. We're hard-headed, we're not easily deceived by propaganda, and we stand up to our oppressors. And while we may not do this all the time because uh, wahala no de finish, as we like to say back home, I think there's a Nigerian in the crowd. <laughs> well, what it means though is that the problems never end. And while I understand that we have to take a break to put food on the table, to at least secure our mental health, know this, corruption, tyranny, abuse of power, do not go on a break. On the other hand, Nigeria is home to over 200 million brothers and sisters with different cultures and tribes and faiths and beliefs. Things and differences that the government has used for the longest time to pit us against each other. But the NSARS movement swept that away, even if it was just for a time being. I witnessed protesters collaborating and helping each other. Protesters giving food and water to the same police who's been killing us off every day. Others provided security. Another group provided funds that were donated to them, I mean in the hundreds of thousands of dollars, for legal and medical attention to protesters who needed it. This is the real Nigeria. But the Nigerian government, much like an irresponsible parent, failed to see the opportunity as a learning curve, to listen to the cries of its quote-unquote children. Instead, they chose to deny these events and also moved swiftly to silence us. Starting with the Nigerian Minister of Information, Lai Mohammed. And yes, you, you heard me right. The Nigerian Minister of Information, our very own spin doctor. Yeah, his first name is Lai. It's inevitable, right? And the pun is begging, is begging me. Lai called the shooting a fabrication of a massacre without bodies. He said I was a purveyor of fake news with the intent of tarnishing the nation's image that I am a terrorist, amongst other things. The Nigerian army called the shooting fake and that I had made the whole thing up with a green screen. Yes, I have plans of uh, heading to Hollywood after this speech. 